Katie, we need to talk. Are you really not planning to come back home tonight as well? A text message from you? What a disappointment. I was hoping it was from Daniel or Mark. You've been really annoying recently. Stop texting me unless it's something important. I'm texting you because it's very important. I'm guessing that you're with Ryan right now. Correct! I'm surprised that you got it right this time. We're on a date together right now. I guess you're finally starting to understand me. As a reward, I won't get divorced with you just yet. I know that there's not much point in me doing that. They're going to have me a new set of divorce papers as soon as something doesn't go your way. Yeah, so what? I can do whatever I want to do. I only handed you those divorce papers because you didn't do as I asked you. You should be really grateful that I'm still married to you. I've been wanting to ask you something for a while, actually. Why should I be grateful for you not divorcing me? Are you seriously asking me that? Yeah, I am actually. You do know that you're at a huge disadvantage right now. You should be grateful that we're still married. I have evidence of you cheating on me with at least three other men. I can hire a lawyer and take some legal actions against you. Are you really sure that you want to be acting so arrogantly towards me? You're so funny sometimes. I can't believe that you're making empty threats to me now. You really need to think about the position that you're in. My dad is the CEO of the company that you work for. He's going to be on my side if we ever get into an argument. You're currently in the position to inherit my dad's company when he retires. If we do end up getting divorced, you're going to be fired from the company and lose your right to become the next CEO. That's why you should be grateful that I'm staying married to you. I'm going to keep on having fun with my boyfriends, and you're going to keep quiet about it. Do you understand now? There's something seriously wrong with you. If you don't want me to divorce you, you better not talk back to me ever again. Tonight I'm going to spend some time with Ryan and I have a date lined up with Daniel from tomorrow morning. Tomorrow night I'm staying with Mark at a hotel, so I won't be coming home. I guess I'll come home the day after tomorrow at around lunch. You better not text me any complaints during the next two days. If you do complain, I'm definitely going to divorce you. I'm just lost for words. You really are a terrible human being. You better be careful with what you say. That's the kind of word that's going to lead to us getting divorced. It really would be bad for you if we got divorced, right? You really need to know your place. Actually, I should be saying that to you. Do you not realize how much trouble you're going to be in if we get divorced and people find out about this? I really don't care. I'm enjoying life right now and that's all that matters. I've got to get going now. Please stop distracting me from my date. Goodbye! Katie! When did you come back home? You should have told me. Also, why is there another set of divorce papers on the table? I don't think that I did anything wrong. You finally found them! Took you long enough. There's a good reason for that. There was no food prepared for me when I came back home. I was really hungry. I can't believe you tried to make me starve. That's why I left the divorce papers. I expected there to be some food made whenever I come home. How was I meant to prepare food for you when you didn't tell me what time you were coming home? If you really want to keep being my husband, you need to predict these kinds of things. You don't want me to divorce you, right? You better do a better job next time. Okay, fine. I'm sorry if I upset you. I'll give you one more chance. Make sure that you don't make the same mistake again. Okay.
I'll be more careful next time. What time are you planning to come home tonight? I'll make sure to have some food ready for you. What are you talking about? I already have plans for tonight. There's no need for you to make me any food. I'm spending the night at an expensive hotel with Daniel. We're going to have so much fun together. Enjoy the night by yourself. I'll come home tomorrow evening if you really want. I know that you miss me. Actually, I have a week-long business trip for work from tomorrow. I probably won't be home by the time that you get back. Wait, what? Who's going to do all the housework this week, then? I'm sorry, but I have to go on this trip. Your dad was the one that assigned me on this work trip. I won't be able to do any of the housework for a week, so I'll leave it all to you. No one's going to make you food at home, so I suggest that you weed out this week. Are you serious? You're so useless sometimes. I have no idea why I got married to you. Yeah, I feel the same way recently. I've got a lot of work to get done, so I'm going to get going. Okay, that's fine by me. Now that I think about it, I'm kind of excited that I'm going to get an entire week free from you. I'm going to have so much fun with my boyfriends. I've got to start making plans. Katie, what did I do wrong this time? I'm getting tired of this. Why is there another set of divorce papers on the table? I didn't see or talk to you a single time this week. There's no way I could have done anything to upset you. Yeah, about that. You know what you did wrong, don't you? Don't you dare try to lie to me. You set up a hidden camera in our bedroom. Wait, what are you talking about? There's no point trying to pretend that you don't know. I can't believe how dumb you are. You left the camera in such an obvious spot. Well, that's unfortunate. I didn't think that you would notice the camera. I guess I underestimated you a little. I deleted all the data that was recorded, by the way. Mark was the one that found the camera for me. He's so smart. As a reward, I booked an expensive hotel room with him. I'm going to spend the night with him here. The divorce papers on the table is punishment for trying to spy on me. Okay, that's fine by me. You really are kind of weird, aren't you? I think it's creepy to set up a camera in my bedroom. What was the purpose for doing that? Did you want some videos of me while I had fun with other men? You really are kind of pathetic. Actually, I was just trying to gather up some evidence. For what? I knew that you would invite your boyfriends over as soon as I left for a business trip. I needed some solid evidence of you cheating on me and that's why I set up the camera. You really are pathetic. There's really no point in collecting any evidence against me. Actually, there is a point. I don't think many people would just let their wife keep cheating on them. So you're trying to say that I'm doing something bad then? Are you really sure that you want to be accusing me like this? Yeah, I'm saying that you're doing something bad. I am definitely not going to forgive you for cheating on me. It's also really annoying that you're not trying to hide it anymore. Are you really sure that you want to be talking to me like this? If you're not careful, we're going to have to get a divorce. You're going to lose your place in my dad's company if we get divorced. Don't you dare try to argue with me. You have to let me do as I want or else. Or else what? I really don't care anymore. Wait, what? What do you mean you don't care? I mean that I don't care if we get divorced now. I just handed in our divorce papers, actually. We're no longer married. Wait, what? Did you really just hand in our divorce papers? You're just joking, right? Not at all. I just handed the papers in about 10 minutes ago. We're officially divorced now, so I'm moving out. I already have a new place to live lined up, and that's where I'm going to head now. No way! 
You had all of this planned, didn't you? How could you do such a thing to me behind my back? I'm so shocked. Are we really divorced then? Like, are we no longer married? Yeah, we're no longer married. I'm also going to move out so that we don't have to live together anymore. Are you dumb? Do you not understand what you've just done? Your life is pretty much over. Do I really have to explain this to you? It's really not that hard to understand. I just handed in our divorce papers so we're no longer married. I also hired a lawyer so that I can sue you for cheating on me. I have lots of evidence and I also know that you've been using the money that I earned on your dates. That's enough ground to make you pay me back some money. What the hell is wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. I think I'm doing what most people would do in my situation. Do you not get that you just lost your job? You were meant to become the next CEO of my dad's company. How could you hand in the divorce papers knowing all of this? There must be something seriously wrong with your brain. Don't worry. My brain is fine. I think there's been some misunderstandings between us. I was never going to be the next CEO of his company anyway. I never said a single word to you about this. Wait, what? I always thought that you were going to inherit the company. He already had some other candidates lined up for the position once he retires. I didn't know that at all. Then why did you want to marry me? None of this makes any sense to me. I thought that you just wanted to marry me so that he would give you the company once he retired. I married you because I used to like you very much. I thought you were the one. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. I guess I don't feel the same way anymore ever since you started to show your true self. Isn't that the reason why most people get married? Because they love each other and want to spend the rest of their lives together? I don't feel that way anymore, and that's why I decided to get a divorce. You really did a great job hiding your true self. I thought that you were such a kind and charming person. Ever since I found out that you were sleeping with other men three months ago, I've been collecting evidence so that I could get revenge. What are you talking about? You must have a really short memory span. Didn't I just tell you that I deleted all the evidence you recorded on that hidden camera? You have nothing on me. I made sure that the memory card was completely empty. That camera that you guys found wasn't the only one. I left that in an obvious position so that you guys wouldn't find the other one. Are you serious? There was actually a second camera that I hid. That one was much smaller, and I made sure that it was difficult to find. You tricked me! I can't believe it! That camera isn't the only piece of evidence that I have anyway. It wouldn't have mattered even if you had found the second camera too. I also have videos from the drive recorder of our car and also another camera in our living room. I have more than enough evidence to show that you've been cheating on me. I had no idea you were spying on me in so many places. I wouldn't have had to do it if you were being faithful to me. I'm not going to forgive you for this. I had such an easy time collecting the evidence because you thought that I wouldn't divorce you. I should thank you for making my job very easy. I don't really want to keep in contact with you, so my lawyer will be the one talking to you from now on. Fine! I don't want to talk to you either. Sue me for however much you want. I really don't care. I'll ask my dad to pay it all for me. I'm going to be discussing with my lawyer about how much to sue you for. I think that it's going to be around $30,000. You can't be serious. That's so much money. I am dead serious. You used my money without my permission on the dates, too. That's pretty much theft. You're also going to have to explain and apologize to the wives of the guys you've been sleeping with. I'm going to make sure that they all find out what you have been doing with their husbands. I'm sure they might want to sue you, too. What? I'm going to be in so much trouble if you do that. Do you finally understand the situation that you've managed to put yourself in? I guess it can't be helped. I don't care about any of this, actually. 
I'll just ask my dad to help me out and to prepare the money. I'm tired and don't want to have to deal with any of this. Actually, you won't be able to do that. Your parents told me that they're not going to be helping you out anymore. I told your dad about you cheating on me and he was very shocked. He cried and apologized to me as soon as I told him about it. Are you serious? He cried? I don't think I've ever seen him cry. Why would he apologize to you anyway? It doesn't make any sense. You really don't understand what you've done, do you? I'm sure that your parents will be in contact with you soon. They told me that you would have to pay all the money yourself. No way! Are they really not going to help me? You can discuss things with them directly. I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. I'll make sure that my lawyer gets in contact with you at some point later this week. Wait, you can't go yet. Let's talk this out. I've decided that I don't want to get divorced anymore. I'm sorry, but there's no going back now. Don't be like that. I'll break up with my boyfriends right away. I promise that I'll never see them ever again. I was actually planning to stop sleeping around anyway. I thought it's about time for me to settle down with you. Let's forget everything that happened between us and start fresh together. I hope that we can find that spark again that we had when we first got married. I left the contact details for my lawyer on the table. Wait, are you not listening to what I just said? You'll probably receive a text message from that number in a few days' time. Make sure you reply to him. Please listen to what I have to say. I want you to forgive me. I've got a lot of things I have to get done. Goodbye. After we finished texting, my ex-wife Katie started panicking and rushed back home. When she returned home, I was no longer there. Instead, her parents and the wives of the men that she had been sleeping with were waiting for her. All of the wives decided to team up and sue her for exactly the same amount. The amount of money that she owed everyone, including me, totaled over $100,000. After finding out that her parents were not going to help her, she tried to ask for help from her boyfriends. However, they all ignored her as their relationships with her were all casual. Currently, she lives in a rusty old apartment by herself and works multiple part-time jobs. I ran into her the other day and she looked nothing like her former self. It looked like she had aged 30 years since I last saw her. I imagine she must be living a stressful and tiring life these days. Erica, where are you? The dinner's not done like it should, and it's well past the time that we usually eat. I'm at my mom's house. I told you I was visiting my dad's grave this week, and that I would be staying at my mom's place because of the distance, and to spend a little bit of time with her. Don't you remember? That was this week? How come you never reminded me? I didn't think I needed to. I thought that my husband would actually bother to listen to me when I am talking about things that I find important. You think everything's important. I don't have time to listen to everything you say and try to figure out what's more important than some other asinine thing. I'm a very busy man, something that you don't seem to actually comprehend. Unlike you, I actually have a job to do and I need to do it well, otherwise I'll be fired and we'll have no money to live off of. We're just barely scraping by as it is. Maybe if you actually got a job and helped out more? Hang on a minute. Why are you saying all this? You were the one who said that I should quit my job when we got married because I hated it so much, and that I should focus on developing my writing career. You claimed that your job paid so well that we would be able to survive on your income alone for however long we needed to. Yeah, well, things change. How so? Have you been fired? No, as if I'd be fired. I'm not an incompetent writer. I actually know how to do my job and how to do it well. Then why the sudden hostility about me working? If your job hasn't changed, then your income should be the same as what we've been living on for the last few months. Well, it's not. But why not? What's happened to change how much money we have coming in? It doesn't matter. All that matters is that it has changed and you need to start pulling your weight more. 
Got it? Now, when are you coming back from your mom's place? Tomorrow? Looking at a headstone can't take that long, surely. Plus, I need you here to make dinner. I've got a late meeting at the office and I want to be able to eat as soon as I get home. No, I won't be coming home tomorrow. I told you I'm staying with my mom for the week to spend some much needed quality time with her. And for your information, it's not just looking at a headstone. I'm paying my respects to the most important man in my life. So if you can't be bothered to cook tomorrow, then you'll just have to get a takeout or something. You know I hate takeout food. It's all really greasy and fattening. I need you to make me a nice and healthy dinner tomorrow. So you best be back here to do that. I've already told you that I won't be. I'm visiting my dad's grave tomorrow, as it is his birthday, and then me and my mom are going for lunch. Well, we'll just have to see about that then. I have no clue what you're on about, and frankly, I can't be bothered to deal with your petty and controlling behavior today. You've changed over the last few months, and turned into someone demanding and mean, and I really can't deal with how you're acting, especially when it's one of the hardest days for me tomorrow. You know how much I love my dad. So you're really not being considerate. Not everything is about you, Erica. I'm your husband, so you need to take into consideration how I feel as well. Considering I'm still alive and your dad's dead, you really need to get your priorities in order. Whatever. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Just try and be a little bit nicer. I am your wife, after all. Erica, after our conversation yesterday, I've done a lot of thinking. In fact, I was up almost a whole night thinking over what had happened and what had been said by both of us. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and I came to a conclusion that has been a very long time coming. What's that? I want a divorce. What? Yep, I've decided that you've become much too naggy and too high maintenance to deal with anymore. You're not the same woman I fell in love with and I no longer have any interest in being with you. Where is this coming from? I mean, honestly, you've never spoken to me about this. Why should I have to? You should have been a good wife and made sure things never go to this state. You should have just stayed home and done what I told you. If you think about it, this divorce is really all your fault. My fault? How is it my fault? Well, with how you spoke to me yesterday, how did you think I would react? A wife shouldn't speak to her husband like that. You know what? Fine. I'll gladly give you a divorce. You're a horrible man anyway, and I'm just sorry I wasted so much of my time on you. I feel exactly the same way about you. Of course, there is the matter of splitting all of our assets and money, including the inheritance that your dad left you when he died. Inheritance? Oh, don't try to play innocent. I know your dad probably left you a load of money when he kicked the bucket. Your family's quite well off, so we'll have to split that as well. As husband and wife, we have to split everything equally. I'll have my lawyers contact you with the divorce papers, which will split everything fairly. Obviously, though, because I've been the sole earner of our family, I'll be getting more of the money than you. As compensation for working hard and providing you with a luxurious lifestyle where you haven't had to lift a finger. Well, that's just plainly not true, is it? I think you'll find that it is and that the courts will agree with me if you try to take it before them. For the sake of your pride, I think it'd just be better if you sign the papers and give me what I'm owed. You're not owed anything, and I'll make sure to get the best lawyers that I can to make sure that you don't get a penny from me. Why do you have to be so difficult? Fine. I'll see you in court. I was going to be kind and give you a 70-30 split of everything, but now I'll take every single last penny from you. I can't wait to see you try. Jess, are you there? Hey, Erica, what's up? Arnold messaged me earlier today and told me that he wants a divorce. What? Oh my god, are you okay? Yeah. To be honest, I'm not as upset as you think I would be. 
I've not been feeling as close to him as I have done in the past. It's like his whole personality has just done a complete 180. It's probably for the better if we do split. Then what's wrong? I suppose it's just because it happened so suddenly. You know, we've been married for a few years now, so for it all to just come to an end like that, it's just a bit of a shock. Tell me about it. And when he randomly shows up at work just to surprise you and take you out for lunch, it's so cute when he does that. Just the other day, he took me to that new Italian place down the street from my work. You know the one? We went there not too long ago. Hang on. Why is my husband showing up at your work and taking you out to lunch? What? Oh, um... Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. He's cheating on me? With you? My best friend? I... It's, it's not like that. Oh, then tell me what it's like. Because right now, it's looking suspiciously like my best friend has been sleeping with my husband behind my back. I didn't mean to. It just kind of happened. So I'm betting he wants this divorce just so he can be with you. Am I right? I mean, I didn't think he'd actually go through with it. So this was your idea? I just mentioned to him the other day how I felt like I was sharing with him and how I didn't like that. He either wanted to be with me completely or not. I gave him the option of being with either you or me. It's not my fault that he chose me. Maybe if you had been a better wife, then this wouldn't have happened to you. I can't believe I actually considered you my best friend. What kind of friend goes behind someone's back and dates their husband? Let's be honest. You can't really call him your husband at this point. You two are more like acquaintances who disliked each other, but were forced to live together. If anything, I'm providing a way out for the both of you. Oh, how kind of you. Let me just get the best friend award to show you how much I appreciate you destroying my marriage. There's no need to be sarcastic. Geez, I can see what Arnold meant when he said you were high maintenance and difficult to deal with. Excuse you? You know what? No. Whatever. The both of you can just get out of my life forever. Oh, believe me, we will be doing that. Just as soon as you sign those divorce papers and give us the money we deserve. What? Arnold told me all about the inheritance that your dad has left you, and we both decided that because you're not been working, you should give us that money as compensation for living without working. Hang on, you're the reason why your income has been so low lately, aren't you? Arnold's been spoiling you, getting you whatever you want, and blaming his low wages on me not working. Well, I might like the finer things in life, but what woman doesn't? It doesn't matter, because with the money you'll give us, we'll be able to afford to move to a much nicer house and live a much better lifestyle. Oh, I don't think so. Not after this conversation, anyway. What do you mean? Well, you've just admitted that you've been cheating with my husband, and that you're purposely going after my money to facilitate your lifestyle. Once my lawyers see all of this evidence about how I've been wronged and basically schemed against by you two, then the judge will definitely side with me. What? You can't do that. I take all this back. It's too late. You can't do that. I've got all the proof I need to make sure that neither of you get my money. None of this is true. Ugh, that's not fair. The whole point of you and him getting divorced was so that we could get the money to build our new life together. Looks like you're going to have to come up with a new plan because you're not going to win this one. I can't believe I called you a friend. Just give me the money, okay? Then I'll leave you alone. If you don't, I'll keep messaging you and I won't stop until you give me what I want. So you're actually admitting that you're going to harass me if I don't give you my money? I think that just might guarantee me a restraining order against you. Thanks. What? No! This chat has been really helpful. Thank you, Jessica. I'm glad I came to talk to you about all this. It really has been a true eye-opener. And it saved me quite a lot in settlement money. I'll let Arnold know just how helpful you've been to me. I seriously hate you. Yeah, well, the feeling's mutual. After taking the divorce to court, the judge ruled in my favor, claiming that because Arnold had cheated on me and was scheming to take my money, he deserved nothing. 
none of my inheritance was touched by either Arnold nor Jessica. Whilst I was sad about losing my best friend and my husband, I knew it was better than to keep those two toxic people in my life. I moved back in with my mom and focused on becoming the best writer I could be. I've just published my first book, which was a major hit, and I'm working on the sequel. As for Arnold and Jessica, he tried to contact me after I became successful, asking for some money as Jessica was nagging him to earn more so that she could live the high life that she wanted. I told him no, of course, and now he's got to suffer the consequence of his actions. Sometimes, karma is a great thing. <laughs>